Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to service this morning. Uh, it's great to have you here. Thank you for braving the cold and the snowy streets. Uh, if you're watching us online, welcome as well. I'm going to start us off with a quick call to worship. Uh, I'm going to be reading Psalm 96, verses 4 to 9. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. If you're able to stand with us as we do just that, let's worship him this morning. Body bound. 
Jackie to come on up with today's announcements. Good morning, everybody. I must be cold out. Why come when you can stay at home and be warm and watch church, eh? But thank you for coming. I just have a couple of announcements to tell you. Uh, first off, tomorrow night will be a training session on safe place, and it's dealing with sexual harass or sexual yeah, harassment and safety of our kids, our adults who are frail and elderly. That would be me and our teens. And so if you can possibly come, if you're interested in what is being done, but if you work in those particular areas, you really need to be here uh, for our safety of our kids, but also um, it's an insurance uh, requirement that we do train and teach our people how to safely treat one another inside the church. Um, as well as that, I need to remind myself and I need to remind you that we're going to the soup kitchen again on October 20, or pardon me, October, February 22nd, and the sign-up sheet is on the back table if you want to sign up. Uh, Aldine and I were laughing this morning because we worked so hard the last time cleaning cupboards. They did it again last week. Apparently, we didn't do a good job. So if you can come to that, fine. Uh, I think those are the two announcements. Uh, Brock has something he wants to say. As he's coming, I also need to um, acknowledge Emma. Emma's going away. Uh, she's on her way to Ottawa on Tuesday, and Emma, we just want to know, <laughs> sorry, Spence just cheered. We just want to know that we love you, and we will miss you, and our prayers will be with you as you go. Okay. Uh, just so you know, Emma, uh, I mentioned that I liked pies last week, <laughs> and I already received a few pies, so if you want some stuff on your way out, just say it. So, uh... Hey everyone, my name is Brock Brower. I'm not the administrative assistant, and uh, this is going to be my last week here at BCCN, but I actually wanted to just take some time here and uh, talk about what's gonna be going on when I'm not here. So my position here over the last year or so has been the head of BCCN media, tech stuff, I was the media guy. Um, since I won't be here, that's actually gonna be passed down to Spencer now. And uh, Spencer, could you actually come on up to the front of the stage? Make, make sure things don't get screwed up on your way, please. Uh, you be careful there. We, uh, I, I pushed the wrong button and reset all of our settings this morning. So if anything happens, it's my fault. So just so you know. Um, this is Spencer. He's my bro. And I just want to say, uh, there's a lot of things I want to say. What should I start with first? Uh, Let's start with the fact that he's all alone at the back now in a booth that's technically set up to have up to five people. So um, if anyone is interested in helping out, that would be great. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, it would be really helpful if everyone could keep an eye to the ground, an ear to the ground. And you don't know, an eye to the ground would mean you'd be looking at the ground. An ear to the ground. Uh, for anyone who might be interested, even just like pushing a single button to move the slides to the next slide, that would help a lot. Really, I would appreciate that for Spencer. Um, and especially because Spencer is a very musical guy. He actually wants to be up here, but he has so many skills back there that we keep putting him back there. And so he's stuck now. Um, so if anyone can help out, that would be great, but just throwing that out there. Um, I would also like to mention that since, wait, what do I want to say? I didn't write a script for this. I should have written a script for this. This isn't your announcement. Well, I mean, it's for you. Okay, well, let me just put it this way. Spencer, you've been a really good bro to me over the last few years. How do I do bro hug? Here, let's just do this. Um, and so I want to say for the last few years and all the work that you've done with me and for me and under me and listening to all my stories and me rambling on about everything and politics and all that, it's been great. I wanted to actually leave you with a gift. And so, uh, Jackie, do you mind? So this is not the exact guitar we were looking at when, I, when I, we went to Long and McQuaid. Uh, I have the receipt in case you want to get a different one instead. <laughs> but it looked really nice and pretty to me, so we're going with this for now. Um, 
So now that Spencer's got the guitar, he's going to want to be up on stage even more. So if anyone can help out at the back, that, he won't be crying as much. So yeah, there we go. I guess, I guess that's it. That's it. That's it. There we go. Okay. Thank you. We had to wait for the tech guys to get back there. <laughs> thank you. And we will miss you, Brock. You you will be missed. And okay, let's just continue with worship before I start crying. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lord God, sometimes we forget that we do need you in our lives. We need your strength, your courage, your peace. We need your hope. We need your intervention in our lives, in our world. reminded this morning we need you to revive us God we need you to revive the church bring revival and renewal and revive our our city our province our country God things look challenging to say the least right now Lord many people are concerned even just about everyday things Lord and I am grateful God that as I was reminded that you are here you are with us in the midst of whatever it is we might be facing and so I, I praise you for that. We, uh, we lift our burdens to you this morning. We cast our cares into your capable hands. I pray for the Coulter family this morning, God, with Dawn's passing. Pray for Kim and Leah and Kimberly and, and, the, and the rest of the family. God, we pray that you would meet them where they are this morning. Be their comfort in their grief. Uh, I know it sounded like it was a, a, a difficult, uh, that Dawn has had some difficult years these past few years. And so we are grateful that he's now with you. He is now in your capable hands and living <laughs> living a new life. But I pray, God, that you will bring comfort and, and peace to his family that left behind and uh, yeah, just Help, help, help Kim especially, um, having said goodbye to her husband and uh, now living uh, in that new reality, Lord. And so I pray that you will be her strength and, and help this family in the days to come. I thank you. Uh, I thank you for Brock. Incredible young man. I thank you for the ministry that he has been involved in here. Um, and Lord, now it's it's time for something different. And I pray you would continue to watch over him, care for him, Lord. Uh, may new doors open for him and new relationships uh, come his way. Uh, and may he always remember, God, that he has a family here as well that will welcome him home. For Spencer, thank you. Uh, thank you for the relationship that Brock and Spencer have had as as uh, Barack put it even, just to, to be brothers together. To not only work together, but to play together, to, to share together. And so I, I ask God that you would give uh, Spencer uh, wisdom and strength as he oversees our, our media department. Bring volunteers, God, that, that can help 
um, help back there as well that can learn from Spencer and uh, God. The one thing, the one thing that's a that's constant is uh, even in the church is that there will always be change, and so I pray that you will help us in these changes and uh, provide. Um, willing uh, volunteers to, to help back there as well. I, I thank you for Emma. Um, God, going on a new adventure. Uh, going in a new direction and starting, uh, starting life on her own. And so I, I, I pray that you will see her safely to Ottawa and that, um, God, that new doors will open for her there as well. Um, give, her, um, give her a new sense of direction, Lord. I pray that um, she would find uh, not only, uh, not only new friends and, and a new life, but also a new vision for for what's next. Um, bless her and Kira um, as they as they live together and uh, grow closer together and um, build build community in Ottawa. So may she always know how deeply loved she is. Not just from me and from us, but from you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the opportunity uh, to share this morning and grateful to be amongst brothers and sisters. And so as we spend a few moments in your word, Lord, I pray, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will uh, guide us and instruct us this morning. Uh, help us to be able to cast our worries, our fears into your hands and to find hope in life. Continue to be with us in our worship, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a little strange this morning. I feel like I'm losing two kids. But uh, that's what happens. Change happens. Kids grow up and move on and... That's what you want them to do. <laughs> um, if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew? We're going to take a, a, a brief look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34 this morning. It's going to be up on the screen. Uh, you can also look in your Bibles or your Bible apps. Uh, Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 6, starting at verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow, yet they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and 
tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. God bless the reading of his word. Uh, Frank Sinatra's daughter, Tina uh, Sinatra, recalls her father's unceasing drive to succeed and make money, even when his health was at risk. If you don't know who Frank Frank Sinatra is, just Google it. Um, His health was in tatters. And his life mired in financial wrangles. But my father refused to stop giving concerts. Uh, I've got to earn more money, he said. His performances, sad to say, were becoming more and more uneven. Uncertain of his memory, he became dependent on teleprompters. And when I saw him at Desert Inn in Las Vegas, he struggled through the show and felt so sick at the end that he needed oxygen from a tank that he kept on hand. At another show, he forgot the lyrics to Second Time Around, a ballad that he had sung a thousand times. His adoring audience finished it for him. I couldn't bear to see Dad struggle. I remembered all the times he repeated the old boxing maxim, you got to get out before you hit the mat. And he wanted to retire at the top of of his game, and I always thought he would know when his time came, but pushing 80, he lost track of when to quit. After seeing one too many of these fiascos, I told him, Pop, you can stop now. You don't have to stay on the road. And with a stricken expression, he said, No, I've got to earn more money. I have to make sure everyone is taken care of. And since his death, there have been constant family struggles over his fortune. Uh, This morning's passage uh, is a familiar one, and it's one that I've preached on before, but uh, with my short amount of time this week uh, that I had to prepare, I thought I would revisit it so you can consider it uh, a sermon 2.0. Now, our passage this morning is from the gospel according to Matthew, and we've come in the midst of... Jesus' dialogues in his Sermon on the Mount. And just for reference sake, this passage is also found in Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 31. There's lots to worry about these days. Uh, We're worried about the cost of groceries, the cost of gas. We're worried about the unemployment rate and the possible recession heading our way. We're worried about our health you know, COVID is still around, and colds and flus seem, seem worse this year. We worry about our family, hoping that our children and our grandchildren will be successful. But Jesus tells us that worrying is useless. If God is willing to take care of the sparrow, how much more is He willing to take care of us? Now, Jesus at this point is not just teaching us about worry, but also teaching us about what to value. Uh, In verses 19 to 24 uh, of this chapter, he spoke about treasure. The whole chapter has this stream of thought about rewards and treasure and what has real value. Uh, True treasure is not found in earthly things, although our world would say different. Treasure, according to Jesus, is found in the relationship we cultivate with God our Father in heaven. What we consider valuable is what gets our passion, our drive. Our passage this morning becomes an extension of this same idea. So let's see what we can learn together here. Uh, Why worry? Why worry? Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life 
what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not your life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Matthew 6, 25. In the passage, there's three areas that Jesus tells us, excuse me, are problem areas for us. Everyday life, food and clothing, and tomorrow. Let's just take a quick look at those. Everyday life can encompass a lot, can't it? Um, How many of you have been asked, what do you want to do with your life? How many of you are still asking yourselves that question? Uh, there, there is so much to do from day to day. It, it, it boggles the mind. For youth, there's getting your homework done. There's doing your chores. There's trying to get in the right school groups and getting good grades. Now, as youth, you may be worrying about what to do for the summer and trying to find a job. There's also the whole issue around peer pressure. Um, That's part of everyday life too. Worrying about what you will be asked to do. What do I do if someone offers me a a cigarette or a drink or, or even drugs? How do I say no to all the wrong things people want me to do? How do I stay away from premarital sex? What do I do when someone puts something nasty about me on social media? How do I respond to incorrect accusations? Now, I slightly older folks worry about getting to work on time and getting our kids where they need to get to. We worry about providing for our families. We worry about what our kids might get into. And some of those same issues that face youth still face some of us as adults as well. Then there's food and clothing. Society has built into us a fear of food. A whole industry has been built around dieting. There are health food stores, dietary clinics, and and whole books written on the subject. Even fast food chains uh, try to put healthier products on their menus to entice people to eat there. Now, some of that fear is justified, of course, when it relates to your health. It seems difficult to even be random when picking a product off the grocery store shelf. I would imagine it's even a little harder as as a youth or a young adult. Companies specifically seem to target younger audiences. How many of you today spent an hour trying to figure out what you were going to wear to church? Kids worry about what to wear. They wonder, am I cool enough? Although even pastors wonder that too sometimes. Uh, Will it make me popular? Do Do I look okay? And of course, there's the issue of where you get the money to buy all this cool, expensive stuff. Costs a lot of money to be cool. And of course, adults worry about how to keep food on the table. We worry about whether or not we can afford to fill up the gas tank. We worry about words like recession and and what that means to our bottom line. And then there's tomorrow, the future. The world gives us so many options. It's, It's hard to figure it all out. I mean, just look at the cereal aisle. How many options there are. Let me give you a list of my career choices as I was growing up. When I was really young, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker or Han Solo. Um, Of course, having the Millennium Falcon wasn't really an issue, but uh, as I got older, a little older, so did my choices. I thought about becoming a private investigator. Magnum P.I. helped me with that one. Um, the most serious one, of course, was I, I, I considered becoming a police officer. Uh, I even did some, some pre- preliminary testing on that. Um, and then after that, I considered becoming a lawyer. And what struck me about it was the, the litigation about being in front of a jury and 
being able to help discover and defend the truth in a, in a criminal court. Finally, um, God got a hold of my life, and I was given a call to full-time ministry. Now, I'm not going to go into how long that took me to sort out, but suffice it to say, there's a lot of sorting out that happens in a person's life uh, who's trying to discover their future. And honestly, it may even reoccur at other seasons in our lives. It's not just when we're younger. We, we question things as we get older as well, wondering, what's next? Where do I go to from here? There's a lot going on in one mind, isn't there? No wonder God has a hard time breaking through sometimes. We, we have all these worries going on in both the back and the front of our minds. And for the younger generation, it's a wonder you can even hear your parents talking to you. But there's some answers, I think, to dealing with these uh, worries as well. Uh, number two, why not? Why worry now? Why not? Even in the darker times of our lives, when we can't see beyond the last bill or we're wondering where the money will come for food, God always comes through. We have a champion for our cause, someone who knows the path that we need to take. He even provides places of rest along the way. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? So why not? Why should we not worry? Well, the simple answer for worrying is that Jesus tells us not to. But for those of us who need a little bit more than that, um, he lays out a pretty simple argument which we can all follow, I think. In verse 26, he talks about birds. And then in verse 28, he talks about flowers. Now, some of you may be wondering why, why he did and why that's a big deal. It's not that we're on par with these two. We are not. Uh, it's because God is concerned over them. And if God is concerned over feeding birds and beautifying the grass, think about yourself for a moment. If God is so concerned over these little things, how concerned do you think He is about feeding and clothing you? We have so much more value than birds and grass. God will provide for what we need. I like how Oswald Chambers puts it in his devotional, um, My Utmost for His Highest. He says, don't take the pressure of forethought upon yourself. It's not only wrong to worry, it's infidelity. Because worrying means we do not think that God can look after the practical details of our lives. And it's never anything else that worries us. Scripture makes it clear that God sees infinite value in us. Jesus also tells us in verse 31 to, act, to make God our first priority. If we make God our first concern, first of all, we'll be acting as God acts with us. And secondly, we'll be showing what is really important in our lives. Now, of course, I'm not saying be careless about it. We shouldn't be neglectful of our health or how we dress or who we associate with or when we have real concerns about something. Certain worries can make us cautious and careful. But most worrying is a distraction. Most of it is a distraction for us. Jerry Sitzer defines worrying this way. He says, worry distracts us more than it paralyzes us. It's like a leaky faucet we never get around to fixing. But when God is first on our list of priorities, the rest falls into place. Jesus calls those who worry pagans. Now, simply, Jesus is calling those who constantly worry unbelievers. An unbeliever lives without God, and if an unbeliever sees the Christian living in the same manner as they are, well, then why would they come to Jesus? There'd be no desire to change. 
But verse 33 puts it well. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When we place our confidence, our trust in the king, all these things that tempt, attempt to plague us will be cared for. In God's timing, of course. So why wait? Why wait? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Probably one of the greatest fears in the world is not having a future. A flower has more value than what a king's wear, and yet its time is so short. Well, what do you perceive your value would be? Think for a moment the, the sacrifice that Jesus made by dying on the cross for a group of people that do not deserve it shows the true value that God has placed in us. Worrying about the future is a fruitless cause. There's a funny thing about the future. We don't really know it. The future is something that could happen, uh, but there's no guarantees. Worrying causes our imaginations to come up with all kinds of crazy scenarios that will never happen. Worrying also leads us to indecisiveness. In every season of life, there comes questions that we need to ask. You know, what career path is God leading me to? Where will I live? How will I live? I mean, there's a lot to weigh in those questions, especially when there seems to be more than one good option. But worrying about it doesn't change the future. Nor does it help us make the right decision. Worrying about the future also distracts us from what is more important, the present. When we think about what we can't control, less time is given to what we can control and to who is in front of us. So how can we overcome it? Well, start with prayer. Peter said in his first letter to cast all your anxiety on him, referring to God, because he cares for you, 1 Peter 5, 7. And Paul in his letter to the Philippians said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, Philippians 4, 6. When we pray, we will find freedom from worry. God changes us through our prayers. Pray for God to go before you and prepare the way. You never know where your answer could come from. Secondly, it, you can prepare. You can prepare for the future. One key ingredient to that is the present. How you live your life now affects how you will live then. Work hard in school. Work hard in life. Develop good habits. Be involved at church and in groups. Be a positive influence to those around you, whether it's at school or at work or even at home. Continue to develop a prayer life. Keep a journal and write down what God is doing in your life. And don't forget to keep studying the Bible. Keep reading it. We can learn a lot even from the examples in Scripture. There's so many characters that even made bad choices that God redeemed. Finally, keep hope alive. Live in hope. Live with hope. Hope means you look forward to the future. There are a lot of good things to look forward to. Getting a report card with A's on it. Graduating from high school and going to college. And I shared with you earlier about some of my desires for the future when I was younger. I never thought in my wildest dreams that this is where I would end up. 
I'm from a little country town in the Ottawa area, and here I am today, an ordained minister in the Church of the Nazarene, serving here in Lethbridge. You see, God has a great adventure planned out for your life, and it never ends. We can only, we can, we can, We cannot only have hope in this life, but we can also have hope in the life to come. You think this is an adventure? Wait until you get to heaven. How much fun is that going to be? Now let me take a few moments to talk about anxiety from a clinical perspective. Now I know it may come across like I think it's easy to give up your worries and your fears, but I know from experience that it is not always the case. There are some within the body of Christ who, who need more than prayer and Scripture to, to fight those anxieties. Some of us need medical intervention and, and the support of a counselor or, or a psychologist. Uh, there, there's some things that are, that are hard to let go of without professional help. Now, I've said this before, my door is always open to talk about what's on your mind. But even I know that God can use medicine and counseling to help provide peace as well. And we need to be a support to those who are struggling. We, we also need to be willing to talk about those issues in the church and seek support from one another. The Apostle Paul said, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. There are some who need to know they are loved despite what they're carrying. And we need to take our burden-bearer responsibility seriously as Christians. As I've shared this morning, probably many worries come to mind that exist in your life. These same three principles can be applied to any of those areas of your life. Take the opportunity today to to begin giving those things over to God and letting Him keep them. It's also important for us to pray together. You never know, one of us could be the answer to your prayer. Share those worries and fears with a, a small group or Sunday school class. When you leave this place today, begin to prepare for God to supply. Look up God's promises in the Bible. Be a positive influence in your surroundings. When people see you living without worry, they're going to want to know about it. They're going to want to know how. And then you get to tell your story. Live with hope. Expect God to see you through whatever it is you're facing. Expect God to have a brighter future in store for you. Now, it doesn't mean we aren't concerned about these things. It means we have a God that can carry it for us and provide solutions. Do not be ashamed if one of those solutions is to seek out help from your doctor and professional counselor. God uses different avenues to bring about healing in our lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you uh, for this incredible teaching. Thank you that there's a God in heaven who cares, who wants to supply our needs. Lord, there may be some today that are for the first time calling out to you, wanting to live without worry. And I pray, God, that you will bring about that change in their lives today. There may be others, God, that are are plagued with worries and have been reminded that you are bigger than anything they are facing. Bring back hope where there has been none and peace of heart and mind, God. And there may be some, God, that, that, that need the help of a counselor or even a doctor Give them courage, God, to take whatever steps they need to take to find freedom from worry. And in all things, God, would you go before us? Would you prepare the way? 
And place in our past, Lord, opportunities to share the hope that you have given us with others. Bless your people today, God. I just pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let's continue worship. We're going to sing two songs before we go today. Have a great week. Let's just sing one last song to end with.